I will want to address a topic that your book does not. Okay, this is shear mappings or shear transformations in uh, two dimensions here. Okay, now uh, I'm going to suppose that uh, all vectors in R2 are drawn in standard position, that is with initial point at the origin. Then a shear mapping in the plane is a linear transformation, okay, in which all points along a given line through the origin remain fixed, while all other points are translated parallel to the line by a distance proportional to their orthogonal distance from the line. Okay? The idea of a shear can be generalized to three dimensions in which planes are being translated instead of lines and can be even generalized further to subspaces in higher dimensions. Okay? Alrighty. Let's give an example here of a shear transformation. It's not too hard, actually. Okay? So I'm going to start out with the easiest example here. Okay, a horizontal shear. Now I've drawn a little picture here of the XY plane. Okay, and I've got a rectangle with uh, the following four points. I've labeled O, which is just the origin. O, A, B, and C. Okay, and then I'm going to hit them with this shear transformation. And I'm going to end up with the following four points. O, a prime, B prime, and C prime, respectively. Okay? Alrighty? Now, because this is a horizontal shear, this is not going to change vectors in the I direction. Okay? So vectors in the I direction will remain unchanged. Okay? So you can think of it this way, in which all points along the x-axis so that's the given line through the origin, remain fixed, okay? That's why in this particular transformation, you notice that A and A prime are identical. And likewise, the origin, I didn't write origin prime, but the origin stays the same. Why? Because it lies along the um, x-axis here, okay? All right? Now, you can see here that my green vector here is actually 2i. Okay, you can I hopefully you can see that that's the vector 2i. Okay, once this shear transformation, this horizontal shear hits it, it's unchanged. It's exactly the same as it was before. However, let's come to this vector from uh, O to C. Okay, hopefully you can see here that this is actually 3j. Okay, because the coordinates of the point C are th uh, 0, 3. Okay. Now, this actually does change, okay? This actually does end up changing. Uh, uh, let's come over here to C prime with this shear, okay? I want you to think about uh, this as a vector, C prime. Do you notice that what? The J component is exactly the same as it was before. So the J component of uh, this vector from O to C prime is actually still 3J. That did not change. What did change was what? The fact that you actually had a zero I component on this original vector, but now what? You actually have what? Three I as a component of this transformed vector. Okay? Alrighty? So it didn't, uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's only changing in the I direction. Okay? It's only changing in the I direction. Okay? So it's actually what? Taking this point, and uh, it's, it's actually the distance from the uh, origin, or distance from the x-axis here, is three units, okay? And this actually got shifted over. Actually, it turns out to also be three units, but that's not generally the case. I just made it look nice and neat this time, okay? Alrighty. Now, that's going to be the same for, like, uh, this vector here from O to B. Now, you can see that vector is what? 2i plus what? 3j. Okay? So, how is it going to be transformed? Okay? Well, the 2i part on that is not going to be changed, but I'm going to be adding to it what? The 3j, uh, or, or the 3i, and then I has the 3j remaining, so I end up at this point B over here. Okay, so do you sort of see this? Look at the 
See how I originally have what? A rectangle here? Okay, O, A, B, C. And now after the shear hits it, I've got O, A prime, B prime, C prime. It's what? A parallelogram. Okay, so it's like take this thing and it's sort of knocked it over. Okay, by the way, can you see that the area of the original rectangle and the area of the parallelogram are equal? Okay, this is always going to be true for shear transformations. Okay, why? Well, you can see they have the same base. What's the area of a, a, a parallelogram? The base times the height, right? The base times the height. Well, you can see they could both have what? The base here from 0 to 2, so it has a base of 2. The height of both parallelograms, right, is 3 units. So the area of this rectangle is 6. The area of this parallelogram is also 6. Alrighty. All right. Now, notice for a because this is going to be a linear transformation, all I need to do is know how the what transformation acts on i and j, basis, basis vectors for what r2, and I will know how it behaves everywhere. Okay? All right, in the above example, Okay, I'm going to assume that the line from the origin to C prime, so this right here, this is how J, this is essentially how the J vector ends up changing here. Now here's J going from what? The origin up to 0, 1. It got shifted over to what? That vector right there. Okay, which you can see is what? I plus J. Okay, or the vector what? 1, 1. Okay, that's how it got shifted over. Okay. Suppose this, uh, we imagine the line through the origin here going from 0 to C prime is actually x equals m times y. Yeah, I usually be right y equals mx, but with a horizontal shear, I actually want to write m times y. Okay, so m in this case is actually what? The reciprocal of the usual slope. Okay, suppose I have this general vector I'm just calling W, which is what? XY, okay? Or XI plus YJ if you want, okay? Now, because it's a horizontal shear, and I'm calling my shear S here, okay? S for shear. S acts on I by doing what? Nothing, okay? So I goes in and I comes out, okay? But how about this? S, uh, S, how does it act upon J? So 0, 1 goes into S, and what pops out? 1, comma, or I should say M, comma, 1. Okay? Okay, so notice that I've still got what? The I, the, the J component, but now I also have what? This X component in here. Like that. Okay? All right. Now, since this is a linear operator here, right? It's a linear mapping. S acting on X, Y ought to do what then? Okay? It's going to do what? All right? It's going to act linearly, right? So it's going to do what? It's going to go, well, it's going to be X times this guy, right? Plus Y times whatever I get over here, and you're going to add those two together. Okay? Now, I've repositioned these slightly, so I wrote it this way. See how you're getting the original vector back plus a multiple of the vector y0. Okay, so it's x plus my y, or it's equivalent to simply doing this to the vector xy, multiplying it by this particular matrix. Okay, all right, here's where I make a comment again. The shear is area preserving. Okay, we saw that geometrically up there. Okay, it's area preserving. Okay, area of the pre image figure and the image of the image are equal. Okay, M, by the way, is sometimes called a shear factor. Okay, shear factor. Uh, another way you can see that this is actually area preserving is the following. See, this is the matrix of my linear transformation here. This is the matrix of S, okay? What's the determinant of that matrix? The determinant of that matrix, you can do in your head there, since it's just a 2 by 2, 
the determinant is 1. Okay, this means there's not going to be what? Any change in area between the two transform figures up here. Okay, no, no difference whatsoever. Alrighty, so we could see it geome geometrically or from our knowledge of determinants. Okay, stuff you learned in Calc 3, right? All right, let's talk about a general shear in the xy plane. Suppose, suppose that the direction along which points remain fixed is uh, along this direction, okay? Now, in my original, I had what? U is 1, 0, right? I just had I. Okay, now I'm going to assume that orthogonal distance from the line through the origin parallel to this vector is considered positive in this orthogonal direction. Okay, so this is sort of naturally what you'd get here if I took the u vector and rotated it pi over 2 radians, right? All right, so this would correspond to uh, essentially j in the case where theta is 0, right? All righty, okay. These are orthogonal. In fact, they're orthonormal, right? These are orthonormal vectors, these two. Okay, now what's our shear going to do to u? Okay, well, u is supposed to be the direction where points remain fixed. Okay, so s of u is just going to stay u. Okay, how about v, however? Okay, well, S of V is going to be what? The original V plus, so S of V equals V plus some multiple of uh, U hat there. Okay. Note that uh, U and V hat are orthonormal, so that for the general vector W equals XY, we have the following. W would be what? W dot U hat times U hat plus w dotted with v hat times v hat. Okay, you remember that formula for orthonormal uh, vectors. This is what uh, basically Fourier uh, expression. Okay, what would s of w be then? s of w would be s would first act upon this vector, right, because it's linear. Okay, this is just a constant multiple, so that would pop out front. What's S of U hat? That's just what? U hat. Okay. And then once again, S would act upon this whole vector. This is just the scalar multiple. So that scalar multiple would pop out, as we see here. And then S would act upon V. But S of V is given by this. Okay. Alrighty. Now, ultimately, this would be an exercise for you using the u and v that I've actually defined above. This ultimately reduces to the following. S of w, which is really S of xy, is the following matrix. 1 minus m sine theta cosine theta, uh, m cosine squared theta, negative m sine squared theta, 1 plus m sine theta cosine theta, times your original xy. So this vector, or vector, this matrix, this 2 by 2 matrix, would be the matrix associated with this particular S. Okay? In the case where theta is 0, right? In the case where theta is equal to 0, you actually get the original matrix we had above there, which is what? 1, M, 0, 1. Notice that the determinant of this matrix is actually equal to 1, illustrating the general idea that we've already mentioned, that the what uh, a shear transformation does not alter areas. Okay? Alrighty? So we have a small exercise for you at the end. It's basically just working this out and showing that you could actually write it as that matrix there. Okay? All right. Well, I hope you understood shear transformations, okay? So just go over it one last time, okay? All points along a given direction remain fixed, while other points are translated parallel to the line by a distance proportional to the distance from the line, okay? So keep that picture in mind, and you should be good. All right, then.